today we're going to start this very important episode Paul's epistle to the believers at Rome Romans is a description of our spiritual journey starting from chapter 1 he talks about God and he talks about our sin and how we've all wandered away from God chapter 2 how God is trying to reach us through a witness of our own conscience chapter 3 the consequence of sin we've all got to come under it chapter 4 it's by faith that we can be justified chapter 5 through Christ's work we receive God's grace and righteousness so he talks about salvation then chapter 6 but salvation also includes getting sin out of your life so he deals with that in chapter 6 and 7. And then chapter 8, he says, you know, it's by the Holy Spirit that we as believers can actually live a righteous life. Chapter 8. Chapter 9 to 11, like I said earlier, it's a little digression. He talks about uh, the Jews and God's plan for the Jews. So he takes a little digression, then he comes back. Chapter 12 to chapter 15 is how to live the Christian life. So let's go to chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Verse 1. All right, so we're just going to read and we'll make comments as we go along. Paul, a bond servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God. Paul, a bond servant. A bond servant is a servant who is completely sold out to his master for the rest of his life and he's done it by choice. It's interesting to see that he talks about whose he is before who he is. I'm a bond servant. And I'm called to be an apostle. Verse 5. Through Jesus, we have received grace and apostleship. That word apostleship simply means commissioning. Now all of us here today have a commission. And one statement we always make is every believer is a minister. Amen? So tell your neighbor, you are a minister. Every believer is a minister. Each one of us have received a commission. Go to the whole world, get people to be obedient to the faith. Now this phrase, obedience to the faith, is quite interesting in Paul's letters. He uses it often. That means, he, and he uses it in the context of bringing people to the faith. He calls it making people obedient. Obedient to the faith. Meaning that when we want people to follow Jesus Christ, we're inviting them to come to a place of obedience, of a place of surrender, of a place of yielding to the Lordship of Christ. Verse 8 says, uh, he says, you know, I thank my God. So remember, he's, never, he's not yet seen the believers in Rome, but he's thankful to them. I thank my God for you believers at Rome. And then I, he says, I am praying for you. Some less something to learn from there. Even if you haven't seen certain believers, if God has put them on your heart, you can always thank God for them and you can always pray for them. Very interesting. He says, your faith is spoken of in all the world. So what happened in Rome quickly spread across as news across the empire. And he's saying, and all the bits of news going across the Roman Empire, one of them is, there are believers in Rome. There are people in Rome who have faith in Jesus Christ. What is Paul's desire? Verse 11, I desire to come to you so that I might impart to you some spiritual gift. Was that accomplished? Yes or no? As believers, we don't measure success by the comfort of the journey. We measure success by the fulfilling of the purpose. Paul fulfilled that purpose. He was able to be two years in Rome and minister to the saints. God loves the sinner. But there is sin and sin has to be called sin. But the good news is the gospel is the power of God for salvation to all. 